<laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to the October 26th, 27th metrics model working group discussion. So nice to have you here. Um, if you could take a second and add yourself to the minutes, that would be wonderful. So yesterday, or yesterday, yesterday, two, two weeks, weeks ago, <laughs> we, <laughs> we spent a lot of time kind of just working on metrics models. And if you, you know, kind of scroll down in the minutes a little bit where it turns kind of highlighted yellow, uh, you'll see that we had kind of spent some time just kind of roughing out some metrics models. And so um, I think the one of the goals for today was to kind of see how everybody made it with respect to the metrics models that they looked at. And I think to, to Lucas's point two weeks ago, um, I think we were trying to overthink what the metrics models could be, and it was probably better just to work on them and let the questions emerge from that work as opposed to trying to anticipate what the questions might be ahead of time. So, um, so anyway, uh, I have a couple that I that I have here. Um, you can see on project decline. That's a Google Doc, so I know I don't have to worry about permissions. Oh wait, or do I? Oh my God, I'm, I'm probably gonna step right into a permissions trap here. Um, thinking of um, uh, document sharing. Mm -hmm. um, so I explored using uh, uh, GitHub for document sharing. How's that look? Um, the um, first of all, I wanted to be sure that there's consensus on doing it before pushing forward. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a wiki that we can use, um, but it is marked. It basically has just one line that says use the Linux Foundation wiki, and the Linux Foundation wiki is kind of you know locked up. Yeah. We could we could easily do that. Um, and then as an experiment in doing that, I did my writing inside of a GIST using okay. Markdown and a GIST that I can share. And so. Totally, totally fine too. I think like in these in these stages where we're just sharing our preliminary thoughts, whatever seems to work best for you is, is cool. We had tried the GitHub wiki years ago and it wasn't great. Maybe it's changed over the years, like improved. Um, all right. So um, honestly, you know, here are a couple, here's one that I had created, Lucas, I, I think you maybe were working with Kevin, mm -hmm. on another one. Um, so the model that I followed here was what I thought, what I remember, what we kind of talked about last time. So just a really brief overview of, of why you should care, trying to come up with some text. This was like a a high school assignment. I was working on it before the meeting. Um, so metrics in the metrics model, you can see kind of listed here. And then I kind of followed that model. We talked about this last time, like why maybe this metric would be important at a really broad level. Sure. A link out to the metric. I don't think there's an implementation, no reference and no contributors. When I was doing this, I think a few things that came to me is like, maybe we should try to, if we follow this model, try to standardize language that goes in here, like just what the sentence structure would look like. And then the other thing that I was thinking about was, oh, um, I could have put like, I felt like I could have put 10 more metrics in this model. And I, I some part of me was like, I wanted to keep it smaller. It's always that move off zero, but I don't know what people's thoughts are on that. So um, I will stop talking there. I have 11 seconds. I got to go check my bread. So <laughs> I, I, I think this is where examples in use are helpful. That I mean, because there are metrics that people do combine into models. I know uh, Don at VMware does this quite a bit and, and Red Hat is doing it. So you know, trying to pick some metrics and say they belong. I, I think we may as well take a stab and see what people find useful and what people find missing for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, I, I think that's wise. 
Um, when I was um, looking at this last week, I felt like there were a lot of metrics that we started with that the group mind kind of came up with. And providing something that was useful meant kind of reducing the number of things to look at and think about. Mm -hmm. I would uh, I would agree with that. So when I was when I was working on the uh, uh, reception metric that we had kind of discussed in the meeting, uh, I ended up I think deleting half of the metrics that were kind of mentioned, uh, and I just landed on kind of a similar number to what Matt has here. And to be honest with you, my uh, the way I built the uh, the model is very similar to the way Matt did it as well. So. So we are more uh, to, uh, take care about uh, the, some specific scenario or the, the, the use case we care about. It's not like a normal process, like um, uh, like the things we, we talked before that, like um, development process. I think that that kind of model would uh, uh, engage a lot of uh, metrics into that model but uh, i think it's not that useful uh, for some special case only for some you know general introduction of how to use those metrics that could be some you useful but for some special case uh, for example here uh, project decline we can just uh, integrate some uh, small group of metrics into this metrics model um, that would be much more helpful for people who care about this part. Picking a fairly specific and limited use case it seems to um, lead to, to better results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. If we try to overload it too much, we're going to end up not. And is, I'm sorry, I had to step away, but is, is what I was showing, is that a specific use case? Is that what we're calling? Yeah, and we were okay. just discussing the merits of how big, how many metrics to include and that we, I think, including a minimal number of our best guess is, is, and then trying that out with people to see if they find it useful. I think that's what we were talking about. Yes, I think. Yes, I, th I think so, because uh, we can use this matrix model to to do different kind of things. For one, one things or for one goal is that we describe some specific specific use case, and we integrate a small group of metrics to describe this matrix model, and also for some normal process like a uh, some uh, development process, it's kind of a long process from the code from the issue submit to the code merge. We can do some. Uh, we can integrate a large number of metrics model into this uh, metrics model. But this kind of metrics model just give us a, an example. Okay, how to use our chaos metrics model metrics? Uh, how to use that? This is just a general example. But uh, if you want a deep, a deep dive into the detailed things you can take a look at or some specific case like yes. this project decline okay. yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah. yeah this is the what what i'm talking about this is just giving giving people that this okay this is a general view you how you can use this metrics uh, or chaos metrics but uh, for some uh, specific purpose you can uh, choose some other a uh, metrics model, yeah, like project decline. Okay. So what I'm hearing, I have another minute and then I have to check my bread. <laughs> what I'm hearing is that there seems to be a, a trend towards maybe a design like this. Is that fair? 
Uh, yeah, in the in the one that I did, I actually did it very similar to the way you did yours. Okay, cool. uh, probably even a even a similar number of metrics. Uh, cool. Should we take a look at those? Is that sure, I, I, is I that this one? Yeah. Yeah. So, and Lucas and I both worked on this, and we kind of took it in two different directions. Yeah, which is so neat. the uh, uh, the one version is his, and then my version is at the bottom. Okay. And and I'm sorry, Lucas, I, I haven't had time to comment on yours uh, uh, yet. So I enjoyed the the the, uh, the dynamic. It was productive, and also you were super busy doing the um, the release. So do you want to talk through it at all, or kind of what? Uh, so mine is just at the bottom. Is it the V2 one here? Is that nope. this all the way down? The one Kevin's, that's the version. Yeah. Kevin's version. That's probably the one. <laughs> it's probably Kevin's. Yeah. So, and, and I would say it's very similar to the way you did yours. Uh, Were there things that you kind of drew out? That uh, I think it, I think it's important to in the metrics in the model. I think it's important to use language. Uh, that can allow individuals to look at these metrics individually or select two or three of these metrics uh, to let them know they don't have to use all of the metrics, right? So when I went down, it's metrics in this model, and I use the term terminology, metrics that may inform project reception, right? So then when I have that list of metrics there, it's these metrics may inform project reception. You can use some of them. You can use all of them. Uh, you can use one of them if you want. Uh, I think that's that's kind of up to the, I think that the person that would come looking for this model could determine which ones were, were useful. So it's not all or nothing here. I like, um the clarity of understanding how to interpret that list of metrics like you know what it means it's like it's pointers into the documentation here are things that are that are relevant uh and um yeah okay i'm back Brett is done um did somebody capture, I had to step away, did somebody capture what Sean, or Sean, what Kevin was saying in terms of things would be helpful? I, I, I think, I think the, the only question that I had is very, very sort of micro um, social listening is almost a, it's, it's a bit of a, unwieldy metric in and unto itself and in an unto itself i am happy to remove that one <laughs> um, uh, i'm not a i am not a fan of that metric i i think it's i think it's ill-defined and even though it's gone it's been modified multiple times i think it's still more of a method than anything else God, that, that, that was terrifying seeing that editor score while you were writing i don't know if anyone else noticed that but it's like like God, I don't want that kind of judgment alone in the middle of writing. <laughs> At least it doesn't say like poor or yeah, yeah. <laughs> trash. Maybe <laughs> uh, you should consider something else as a job. <laughs> uh, so when you when you stepped away, Matt, I I had I had said one of the one of the important takeaways that I had from this is is using language that uh, that allows the the person using the metric to to know that it's not a take it all or uh, or leave it model, right? You can you can use the parts of it that are helpful. So uh, when I have in, underneath metrics in this model, I have a sentence that basically or uh, a header that basically says metrics that may inform project re reception. Uh, and and when I say that, when I and I, then you give you a list of metrics, but it's uh, I'm trying to say it in a way that says, you know what, you can use two of these, you can use three of these, you don't have to use all of them. These are the metrics that we know of that 
can inform project reception. Uh, and Okay. I also put in there in metrics that you are able to measure because it is possible that we mentioned yeah, that you can't. Yeah. Do what like, yeah, can't do that one. And I am just gonna I am gonna delete social listening because I don't I don't like it. Okay. So. It's just hard, it'll be hard to realize a metrics model using that metric, I think is the practical yeah. concern. So are we ever gonna have okay, so then Kevin, we can we'll take a look at yours here, Lucas, in a second. But um, are we ever going to have a visual of the metrics model? This part. I don't know what this one would look like. I don't know what mine would look like either, or the DEI badging. Like it's, I don't, it doesn't have a look. <laughs> it's, it's a list of metrics that you can put forward. In the one that uh, in the one that Lucas created, I could envision the metrics living within with inside a, uh, a a process uh a process model uh similar I to agree. the one yeah I, okay so so I, I think there is space okay for the metrics to live within process models uh but i think there is a little bit of a distinction there is that we're modeling the process versus modeling uh a use case right the the uh for for the way i did mine i think i think indicators of project reception mm -hmm. i don't think project reception has to be a, a process uh, we don't could agree. we could we could map it out on what a what a new contributor does when they join a product project and and put it into a process but i don't know that that's necessarily always helpful Okay, well then, that being the case, we'll we'll leave it because it is an optional thing anyway. The visual of the model, this is optional. So okay, point well taken. Um, you did. The, yeah, Vinod. Just a comment, maybe a side comment, or like uh, listening to Kevin's talk of a process model. I think the entire evolution working group and all the metrics can be part of the process model thing because okay. evolution is actually a process from growth to maturity to a decline remember the initial name was that growth maturity decline yeah okay so yeah so should we hear you know this thing should we indicate whether or not we think it's a process model or a use case your name like a new column so I had to call them yeah i agree i don't know i don't know anything about this stuff i mean i think when it comes to visualization um it's going to depend on the metrics model and like, like that's actually, I think, a creative activity unto itself. It's, it's probably worth undertaking. I don't know if it's the kind of thing that can be undertaken in a Zoom call, but if, if we have a metrics model that we think is one that we want to continue to develop, I think it would be, I'd be happy to uh, work with um, Ragava over there at UNL. Um, um, figuring out ways that, that that model could be made more visual. Okay. Because I do I do think I do think it will be the, the, the visualizations won't be intuitive, but if these these descriptions are, are that are provided make it clear what we're trying to illustrate. The reference Sean was making is he's working with uh, a student to help actually deploy some of these metrics models to see like what yeah what take so actually creating i think you're creating notebooks aren't you yeah we're, we're using jupyter notebooks the, the ultimate aim would be to include them as endpoints with visualizations in auger but we, we start with notebooks because they're far easier to edit <laughs> than a monstrous okay. python program all right cool um 
mean, maybe, maybe in some cases, these are um, illustrations that help communicate the substance of the model. Okay. That it's not necessarily a process, it's just a, a visual. Okay. Um, Lucas, do we want to talk about yours? Sure. So, yes. Why doesn't that even show up as a link? There we go. Okay. So um, I was looking for actionability. Um, and then I created this category business context. Um, I wanted to um, you know, model a, I don't know, a particular real world uh, situation uh, mm -hmm. and um, attach the metrics to uh, facets of that. So um, <clears throat> you notice that in this use case, there is a natural kind of um, flow to it. It very much is. Yeah. Um, but it, this may be, um, it's almost, this is almost like a, a like pseudocode. It, it's quite different. Uh, and I wonder about people's thoughts on whether this is too, uh, too limiting. Maybe the way to approach this would be um, with a list of metrics that you may be interested in, and then um, and then for each one, a explanation of what it's useful for. So that would be um, very much in sync with um, Matt's and Kevin's, mm -hmm. uh, and um, and then there would be a separate illustration that shows the process model. Yeah, it's almost so. It's interesting reading yours. You're right. I, I read it like a story, <laughs> like a like a narrative for a person <laughs> being part of a community. And I don't know if that's what you meant to do, but that's how I see it. Um, and then I, I agree, like, I think right at the end, it almost looks like, like I and one are almost just like inverses of, of this. They're, it's like this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think it'd be easy enough just to flip those around. You would say, here are metrics. And then for each one of those, I mean, the narrative is, it could be pretty similar for each one of the metrics. Like you care about stars because, you know, that demonstrates awareness or something along those lines. Um, I think that uh, I should um, return to this and um, change the, layout to reflect this other approach. Okay. And I'll think about a illustration to, um, you know, communicate the story side of it. Yeah, I'd be interested to see what you come up with from an illustration perspective, because I think content wise, it really actually is the same. These are the same, they're just two different angles into the same thing. Um, okay, cool. Were there any, um, Kind of as we're, we're thinking about these models, um, if I look at the notes, you know, like I, I, one of my comments was that, you know, kind of standardizing the text for the description and maybe even the why you care. I don't, you know what I mean? Like just so when you write it, Kevin writes it and I write it, it's all kind of the same. Um, keeping the models relatively simple with a handful of metrics. Was there anything, Lucas, that when you were working on this that you were kind of thinking, you know, we need to be attentive to? Um, I think um, I sort of went back to the user story conversation we had. Mm -hmm. uh, and thought again about the value of uh, user stories. What was your thought there? Something like, um, 
the user, user. So the way that I structured mine was to put user stories top mm -hmm. metrics bottom, and the way that we are doing things um, by consensus is there's a list of metrics with kind of a user story. Yeah, sort that, of. Yep. yeah, sort of. Um, and, and maybe that just goes into the why you care. The larger story. The maybe story. so. Maybe the so the user story is more embedded. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Actually, I'm going to look at your. Community manager on a project that wants to increase. So you wrote it, interestingly, you wrote it as first person, hmm. which no, no, I, I did not. That, that format is, is is a true that is a true user story format the first there. person so yeah as a as a community manager i want to do such and such I like so that. that so that i can yeah. do such and such that's i think it's a little bit more engaging to be honest with you what's up i, I like it i think it's more engaging the the first personness it's also um it's a it's a time tested way of um doctoring. Okay. The the one thing that I would say, uh, so I like it. I like it as well. Uh, however, I, I think I've said it before, and I'll, I'll say it again. I I kind of think that we should be user agnostic. So this metric isn't just important to a community manager. You know, it's it's important to other different types of users. Yeah. So. I think we should kind of avoid calling out, you know, community managers or developers or whatever those personas are. And I, I think we should kind of be agnostic with the user. So I like the user story. I just, I, I'm not sure it's helpful to identify the person that may be using the, uh, comment. John, you have a comment? My, my only thought is like everybody's a community manager if they care about these metrics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> a, that's a fair statement. So <laughs> do we so do we just use community manager for all of them and just say community managers, you know, if you're interested in metrics, then you're a community manager and the, you're the target person that we're looking at. Yeah. So if that's the case, then then the only reason community manager is there is to make the user story uh first person basically well, i'm kind of okay with that at least on first thought and the so reason i'm okay that, with it as well because uh, to sean's point yeah I, I i would suspect most people are community managers or at least understand community management to some degree and the other is like i don't know i would suspect people who might be reading these are are bright enough to <laughs> abstract <laughs> Like fine, technically I'm not a community manager, but I get it, you know. So I, I'm fine with that as well. I, I was just worried that at some point we were going to start saying, as the product manager, I'm interested in this metric, and as a developer, I'm interested in this metric or metric model. Uh, so if we if we just all agree that community manager is kind of that default persona that we're we're writing towards, and all of those other entities could be community managers, then, then I don't have any issue at all. With okay. So. What, are, what are other people saying? Joey or Lucas? Uh, the, the project decline model um, mm -hmm. has a different persona. Well, yeah, I didn't, didn't write it that way. Yeah. Mm. This would be like, as a developer incorporating Third party or some or some companies who want to choose a software from the open source community he want to pick up one of the thing see so they should look like uh, looking for 
that open source community if it's declined or it's uh, it's promoted so i think it's uh, from another uh, perspective I, I agree with uh, lucas it's not just from project uh, community manager and uh, well as, as a big company they always looking for uh, some uh, true uh, looking for some software they can use in their productions a product so maybe as a product manager or software development team so community managers aren't interested in project decline yep i, I think i think hospital portfolio managers are paying attention to decline mm. they're they're interested in dependencies that are no longer going to be maintained and that their infrastructure relies yeah. on yeah so so to my point earlier adding these different personas adds an element of complexity to this and i think i believe that community managers are worried about project decline as well yeah so what, is, mean, what is the value especially if in, it's their community <laughs> yeah what is what is the value of using product manager instead of community manager if if we're all interested in the same metrics models I think in the context of the uh, decline model, the persona is a consumer of a open data package. And I guess my question is, is that also like community manager, uh, you know, so common that it's meaningless? Is, is, is everybody a consumer? I don't know. <laughs> is everybody, okay. I mean, no, I think I think there there are like developers, I think, don't consume community health metrics. They're trying to get their jobs done mm. um, in many cases. Or or if they're interested in them, they're interested in to the extent that their manager is interested in them. Um, but like you know, like ASPOs have a particular perspective, and I don't know that they're that different in terms of the things that they would worry about than a community manager, except the scope of their concern is much larger. Right. But in open source, the user, developer, and the maintainer are very fluid, like they are interchangeable roles. We seem a little stuck right now. <laughs> in my mind. But maybe there, there is no instantly obvious consensus and we should leave that floating in this sort of thousand flowers stage. Uh, and I agree with, I agree with Lucas. I, I'll throw one other thought out there. Um, my, my master's advisor taught me that if you use the second person when addressing students, everyone thinks that you're talking about them because it's the use of you this and you that. And that gets students' attention. I don't know if the same applies to this kind of communication. I'll just, I'll leave that in the garden to grow. Other thoughts? I guess I, I guess I would kind of, you know after after these different types of users have come up again uh, I, I guess I would change my mind about the conversation and and kind of go back to what I was saying before is that maybe we should just be agnostic to the user and we we just we care about the activity and the use case uh, and not the person that. Uh, and not the person at all. So maybe we maybe we we can still write the user stories. We just leave out the first person. But then we use you. Or do we write it like this? Because that still has this implication of a of a role. Yeah, I think something like that would be better. All right. Well, even. Even in this, if you look at your organization, that means that organization is kind of a persona we are pointing in that. Mm. 
So let's take a, a group group level action item to, 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 <laughs> to think about this because it, it's kind of important because, you know, I, you, did you want to say something too? So you unmuted. All right. No, no. You're good. Okay. Um, cause it would be important. Cause I think if, I think we all agree that if Lucas is writing them one way and I'm writing them another way and Kevin's writing them a third way, at some point we're gonna have to wrangle those together <laughs> to, to get some consistency. I, I think we all at least agree on that. Yes. So, um, so let's, um, that's an action item for everybody. How about, okay. Let me think about, think about that. I want to have, um, I'm going to give myself a, a to do item before the next meeting to, you know, I'll fix up the one that I already did, but also turn out one or two more or however many come up. And, and when you do that kind of thing, you see the patterns, and, you know, keep Fair enough. ideas. Right, right. Like if we write 20 metrics models and they all have a tendency of following maybe this pattern, you know, from, from that style. Fair enough. Okay, that's your point, right? Okay, <laughs> just making sure I got it because I was repeating it. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's make more. Uh, yeah, let's make more. So Elizabeth had put this in there. I just want to put this um, in front of everybody. The the development of a high level metrics model. My, I wish you were here to explain it a little bit more. So I think her thought was, um, Vinod and Sean and Kevin. You'll know this, Yahui and Lucas. I don't. I don't know if you'll know this, if but we used to produce community reports. So there was we had this process by which a community, any community, could re request a chaos community report, and it contained four kind of metrics about the community. I kind of forget what they were. Sean, do you remember what you were? Uh, one of them was commits. One of them was pull request acceptance rate. One of them and, was related to newcomers, I believe. And one was on the time, like uh, which day of the week they were committed or something along that, like weekly or Monday, Tuesday, that factor from the Grim Order. Okay. So there was a suggestion from Elizabeth about creating, it's just a, another metric model that is, it's like a metric model that is, um, it's basically the community report, I think. There's this really high level, like, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> like, just help me start seeing things that open a conversation for me as a community manager or as, a, as an employer or, or produce manager. <laughs> I put produce manager. Produce manager, yeah. <laughs> Down at your local shopping center. That's so, my favorite produce manager. <laughs> what did people think about like a series of maybe metrics models that are really, they're very high level. They're in they're intended to be high level. And we all of us on this call might look at them and be like, yeah, I need more detail than that. But just kind of remembering there's a whole audience out there that's like, I don't even know where to begin. Just help me begin. And we had some pretty good descriptions in that. Does anybody have that? Um, one of those community reports handy, Vinod? Do you have one? Yeah, it's still on the website. Are they? I think so. They are on the GitHub. But let me find out. Can the... you put it in the chat? Yes. Just give me a second. OK. I think it's a pretty good idea, because sometimes we get kind of in the weeds of creating metrics models under this assumption that People are like these highly skilled community managers and they, they know the things that they want. And I think some people are just, <laughs> I, know I just dropped the link in the chat. Yep. Yep. Thanks. All right. So do we, where are the reports? Uh, so they are in the, uh, aren't they in a GitHub repo? There is a link I posted there for the sample reports in the chat. Okay, gotcha. The, yep, these are the three we produced. Like it is a PDF. Yep. Can you see that? Okay, or follow the link. Activity dates and times, and we have pretty nice descriptions. What these are.
I mean, maybe this is a metrics model unto itself. And this is the metrics model called getting started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do y'all think of that? I, I like that. Okay. Um, all right, cool. And then the good news is, there's good news. The good news is we have this whole community report program where people would submit a request for a report and that's the grand total of <laughs> requests that we got. So it was not exactly a program that took off like the badging program. <laughs> so, you know, maybe we find new life in this work. That's the good news is that nothing dies. <laughs> The energy just keeps going somewhere. All right. I'm gonna, and Yahui just put something in there too. Whoops. I'm trying to cut and paste this. Yahui, do you want to talk about what you just put in there? Yeah, it's uh, it's coming from coding and it's supported by backend supported by Groom Lab. It's. Um, Different uh, of projected reports you can you can get. <coughs> it's it's declared that it's supported by the chaos and, and auger. You can screw up. You can find the, the chaos. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 Two of the uh, graphs in the community report were from the children, <coughs> I guess. They were yes. Yep. So two of these. So basically, yeah. Longer story is like we were trying to use the community report to draw people to the tools. Cauldron being one of the tools, Augur being another tool that can produce these kinds of things. So we were trying to just say to people, here are a couple of things that can help locate you in your project, and here are some of the tools that are available within the Chaos Project that help that help get that work done. It was a brilliant idea. Just never took off. Okay. Cool. Um, great. Lucas, did you have anything you were going to work on in particular? We're just going to kind of pick your own brain over the week. Uh, I, have, I have one idea. Is I'm going to do the uh, Nadia Eggball model. Okay. And she, she has this thing of she characterizes projects by contributor growth and user growth. Okay. It's two different models, probably, or, or one. Yeah, model. they're together. Uh, so she has this like quadrant deal. Okay. High contributor growth, low contributor growth, high user growth, low user growth. Yep. Okay, right on. Right on. Okay. Um, anything else, folks? Hey, look, my editor score just went up. <laughs> Where'd it go? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I typed contributor growth and user growth and it went up. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, everybody, thank you for the for the thoughts. This is always really good. I think we make progress. It's always kind of fun to make um, progress like a, like a tortoise, like just slowly but surely. And then you look back and you realize how far you've come. And I think we're getting there. Um, and I, I think the work that we're doing is really helpful because people who are gonna be approaching this for the first time, or as we've learned in the Chaos Project, are always super appreciative. They're like, I can't believe you've thought through all of these things and you've really cut a big corner for for me, for a lot of people. So thanks for all of your your mental effort and, and thinking about this stuff. Really, really appreciate it. All right, well, have a good evening. Yeah. Lucas, good luck with your basement and your sky yes. river. <laughs> all right till next all time right. everybody take care take care everybody bye okay bye bye, bye.